Hi everyone, welcome to Tech Down Over. I'm Rick Zanotti and I'm joined today by my good friend down under, Jeff Blanchard. Mm -hmm. Hey Jeff, how are you? Good, thank you, Rick. So exciting to look forward to a nice new show today. Yeah, I've got some new stuff we're going to talk about. Think Canon C200, think Lytra mm -hmm. Torch and Lytra uh, Pro and what other things. And we've got Harold Mugliotti, he's manning the video switcher and he'll be on helping his co-host. Here we go. This show is sponsored by Relate Corporation at www.relate.com. Your training and video partner. Hello, I'm Peter Baker. Please visit voiceovermasterclass.com to see details of the training courses I have on offer for new and existing voice talents to further their career by enhancing voice and technical skills as well as essential marketing tips. You know, Jeff, I think you're starting to sound more and more like Peter Baker. I am, am I? You are. You have a similar okay. tone. Tech down over. Yes. Tech down over. Well, hopefully if I can get, so, if I could, I would love to go into that for sort of like semi-retirement. because You're getting on, but I love doing that sort of work. Uh, so it'd be great. Well, I remember when I first met you and now I think your voice is uh, just a lot better. And that's, you know, it's been like 10 years almost. Mm. You've done an, an, an incredible job working on your voice and training it and uh, for those who don't know, Jeff reads a lot of uh, LibriVox books. He, he donates time and effort to help people, you know, get those kind of books. And uh, he does voiceover for where he works in other places. So I, we've got a budding voice talent here. And, and uh, you know, he's available if you want any recording help or anything else. You can do it. <laughs> but it's very, it, but like everything, it's, it's just when you do a lot of practice, I think that's... That's all that's it the is. Thing. Yeah. The thing was... And as a kid, I was hopeless at reading out loud, and I hated it. <laughs> but now I really enjoy it. When you, it's it's just amazing how much it really improves your reading skills when you do do that. Yeah, and and, and a lot of people don't believe loud. that. Yeah, you know, I've told many people throughout the years. Look, if you want to get good at voiceover, practice reading out loud. But don't practice mm. just reading. Practice emoting. Practice, mm. you know, something like you know, say something. I went to the store the other day and I found what I was looking for. I went to the store the other day and I found what I was looking for. I went to the store the other day and I did find what I was looking for. And just practice different ways to say it different. And, and before you know it, it becomes natural. And you can change your voice, you can modulate, you can have a lot of fun with it. I always, always remember, I know it's a silly one, but I always remember the English comedian, Benny Hill. Ah, and one, yeah. one of, one of the, uh, the sketches he used to do was, you know, the, the, the failed commercials or the failed scripts. And, you know, it was the one with a woman going, look ahead. <laughs> he said, no, it's look ahead. <laughs> but it's, um, just, just saying it slightly different. But, uh, <laughs> yes, you've said the word, but look ahead. <laughs> <laughs> But that really made a big, but you know, when you read, it says, look ahead, but it said, no, look ahead. If you, you just know what the hardest thing is when you're a good voice over town is being able to read a paragraph ahead of time while you're talking. Yes. And they do. Yes. These guys, the best I've met mm -hmm. can scan ahead quite a bit. And I, I'm, I'm amazed by it. It's wow. I really do a good think, job at that. I think it's the same thing as uh, when I'm typing, I can touch type, mm -hmm. but my brain, I get so then I panic because you you stop thinking and you think, well, my finger's typing. Hmm. And then you make mistakes. It's the same thing with voiceover. You start reading and you go, and you say, what am I doing? And then you automatically make a mistake. It's a bit like when you're painting a nice <clears throat> thing on this and I don't get away from the lines, but your brain automatically makes you do it in the wrong place. <laughs> it is <laughs> like amazing. I, I wrote an email not long ago where I, my fingers were, my, I think my right hand was one off on the keys. I wasn't paying attention. No, yes. And I'm not looking at the screen either. I'm just sort of typing yeah, and thinking while I'm typing. And then I sent it. And I went, oh, God, what did I just do? Totally rubbish. But, your Jeff, Enigma code. What, what you're saying also makes me think, you know, most of us spent most of just about every day doing a perfectly fine job of breathing normally. But mm -hmm. when you think I have to breathe and do it normally, then uh, suddenly <laughs> 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 you start paying attention to it. <clears throat> Yeah, you start gasping. <laughs> I'm hyperventilating. 
Well, well, it's the same thing. It's like when doing voiceover, you say it perfectly and you can do it all that. But then a lot of the time, if you don't, you press a record button. <laughs> and then because you, you stop breathing, you just, I'm recording you, now, but uh, you I'll find a... If, if you go on the web and you look at some of the voice guys who are really good, I mean, you know, like mm. Booth Junkie and stuff, and they go, okay, I got it. Let's see. We're going to read some ad copy here. <laughs> All right, here we go. If you buy a Honda, you've got the Honda. <laughs> Let me do that again. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and you, you expect to be, see an ambulance coming in the next shot. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, you know, a lot of these guys. I don't know how many uh, these guys. I don't know a lot to do, but a lot of them smoke. So it's like you know that. <laughs> it's like oh my well, god. Well, also, uh, it's probably not good, but also as well, people like that sort of tone of voice sometimes because sometimes there's an ad uh, with a woman doing a voice over here, and I think she obviously smokes, but she's got such a gruff voice. But people mm. wanted that. It's yeah. got the husky sort of. But right. you thought well, I bet you're a smoker. <laughs> Yeah, but <laughs> it's all. But depends. it is funny in, just listening to some of the outtakes, and it just—it's it, absolutely hilarious. It's like, wow, that's that's sort of interesting. Well, well, that's the thing. Yeah, I was just said that's the thing is, is uh, you, you think everybody just gets up there and does it all perfectly, but everybody does their mistakes, and you've still got to add it. And if you believe yeah. voiceover things, nobody ever breathes because no? you very ever. rarely hear. It. Anybody to go <gasps> only on in audio books, maybe, but nobody breathes. <laughs> I, I've actually trained some voiceover talents that were actually professionals, and I went, guys, you got to watch a. <gasps> it's like <clears throat> stop, <clears throat> breathe through your nose. It's stuffy. I don't, okay, but you know, and I'm, you I'm, can't take a gasp. Now you can get rid of the gasp, but sometimes what they do is they would gasp, and then they wouldn't leave enough time. So you're spending a lot of time zooming into a file to yeah. cut it. But also as well, what you've got to make sure if you can't do it and you've got to go, <gasps> then you've got to say slowly the word, not with, because you say it with a big power, but it, so you can get right. away with, you can edit out the, the gas. But if you don't, and you, all of a sudden you've got, I was going to, the street, because you've cut out the thing and you've got a real loud voice. But you've got to take a huge gas, <gasps> go at the same pace that yep. you were, but if you do, but you can cut that out. But if you don't realize, oh no, I've got to be the same quietness on that one so it's all, it's uh, all, know, it's, it's sort of interesting doing. well you know this week we've been playing with uh the c200 the canon c200 mm -hmm. is a cinema camera we got this back in december uh year end and uh that's it right there uh let's see are you showing it there we go so Good that is the c200 look. and you notice on top there's a light that light does mm -hmm. not come with the c200 i'm using it as a tally light because it's bright and it's a magnetic light that you can just attach anywhere. We have it on top of the hot shoe. And that is a Lytra, L-I-T-R-A, torch, 99 bucks. The mm -hmm. Lytra torch, it is a really cool light. It can do, it has three levels of brightness. We're on the lowest level right now. It also has a blinking light and then it, you can just turn it off. Uh, it's USB chargeable, no battery, and it's a wonderful light. You should get about six to eight hours, maybe a little bit more, depending on, on how long you have it on and what level you're at. Uh, it does a great job, but we put that on the C200, like I said, as a tally lamp. And if you notice on the C200, we have it lit up with another Lytra, which is the Lytra Pro. You can't see it now, but... This is that what that is, one looks like. Oh, there it is. Mm. Yep. And that's a small, it's, you know, it's about a credit card, maybe a little bit bigger than a credit card, a little thicker, but it does an amazing job. That can go on for about seven hours and that can blind you. You put that all the way up. Any of these lights will leave you kind of going, ooh, that was bright. Uh, so what we're doing is we're using that with the C200. And if you go back to that live shot, there it is. Uh, that, that is the side view of the C200. We have a 50 millimeter lens on it. That's a Canon uh, F1.4 uh, L lens. It's a pretty good lens. Actually, right and now we've got the Sigma on there. I, I couldn't find the Canon oh, that's a Sigma at the 50? time, but we've got the Sigma 50 on there. Oh, interesting. I thought that was the Canon one. So the yeah. Sigma's an F1.8. Uh, not quite as bright, but still pretty bright. And uh, nice. It's a really, that thing takes a lot of light. It's, it's a, I think it's like a 77 millimeter front. I'm not sure. It's huge. Uh, and it's a heavy lens. So, And you can see the 
R Rick shot is the image that you're getting from that camera with the lens right now. Yeah, it does a really good job. And the Canon color, what we've noticed as we worked on it, when we first got it, and we're going to do a video on that this week, is everything looked very magenta, very red. And it wasn't looking that good. It's like, and if you look at a, a lot of video podcasts, especially with Canons, you get a lot of reddish tones. If you look at Sony's, you're going to get probably a bluish tone. If you look at Panasonic's, it'll be kind of greenish blue. So all the cameras, the sensors have different casts yeah. you know, of, mm. of colors. And, you know, what, what Harold did on, on this one is we started doing some research and we lowered the amount of color for the green, I'm sorry, for the red and the blue, correct? Um, we mainly did the the because it gives you different color axes where it lets you shift. The one we, we mainly did was, it, there's one where it lets you shift the red and green, so it shifts, uh, we shifted it more towards the green. And it also has other ones like red, blue, green, blue, that sort of thing. And so you have pretty good color control. Uh, I mean, we could, I mean, this is even shooting in log, we were getting the same problem with, I think it was Canon Log 3, uh, it was really red. It was. It was. Now we could adjust it in post, but we were still having to get rid of a lot of red. So what we did is we did it in camera, which makes a little more sense because that way you don't have to deal with it. And we, I don't. Know, we have we, on this shot. We have no color adjustments. It's basically what's been adjusted on the camera. Yeah. And the way we're doing the lighting, we're doing a thing on that they call Rembrandt lighting, which is a light higher up that kind of swoops down at you, so it lights kind of gives you a hair light. We don't have the hair light on behind me. And it's basically a one light solution to give a very natural color tone without, and, and a lot of shadowing, which, which is good. You get good shadowing without having to, to, to create a very dramatic look. It's a natural, more serious look. And the, the lighting, it's a very nice lighting style. I'm, I'm used to the three point lighting style. And I've done one light lighting, but much lower so it's a different kind of look um we did some research and on london real which is a podcast london real tv if you haven't seen it it's uh, that's their youtube channel london real tv all one word and when uh, this goes up on youtube i'll, I'll link to their channel yeah if you london check it real r-e-a-l uh, not r-e-e-l um london real tv brian jo uh brian rose brian rose i'm sorry I have a friend named Brian Jones. <laughs> Brian Rose is the uh, owner of, of that channel. He does the London Real TV production company. They do a great job with interviews and their lighting is something we really like. They do a great job lighting and making it look interesting. So we, so we analyzed it. What are they doing? And we think we got it. And so we're, we did lighting like they did. Um, and I think it gives a nice effect. We're going to adjust uh, Harold's camera next week to see if that makes a difference. Uh, he's on the GH5 right now. Currently, I'm on the um, C200. And in the back, that shot you've been looking at from behind, that is the uh, Panasonic GH5S. So, right, so that's the cameras we have in studio right now. And, um, and the light I'm using, you really can't see it from where I'm at, but it's a big dome. And it is the... Uh, aperture uh, 120D for daylight. And uh, again, a very nice light. It has the, the mini dome or the shorter dome, which is still about almost three feet in diameter. It's a, it's a, it's a good light and uh, it, it, it's huge and it gives a nice diffuse light without you know, burning out anything. So we've been having a little fun trying to get all these things together and and get the right colors and get the right everything else we're doing a video shoot in studio on wednesday of interviews and we wanted to make sure the c200 and our lighting was set up correctly for that interview style they'll be kind of kind of the same thing but they'll be looking like this so you can see you know where the shadowing is i'm probably at the wrong position for this uh right now but it'll give you an idea and it's been fun it's been fun working on 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 this kind of stuff but like you said, you said uh, when you're getting a when you want a good image and a good sound and uh, all that, it's all all part and parcel. So you have bad lighting, then the image is horrible. The focusing's hard to do. It's all it, and you get that. But if you have perfect lighting, it makes the focusing and the filming easy to do. Yeah. Then the sound just <clears throat> takes it off. 
you can always have you know the other other lighting solution like the Barbara Cartland lighting. Yes. Just like this. The, oh, there, yeah, the Barbara Cartland light gets rid of all the wrinkles and that. So yeah, the frightening side of lightning like that. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> on that so i've been buying a little thing to this week i bought a a little just a little separate light this Ooh. week so what is on that, that one? one that's just one of the newer you know the the newer brand called the, the oh the that was newer. a newer yep mm -hmm. newer light, think, so. is it newer or newer i'm not sure i, th I, don't I think dutch. Say. i don't know if uh, they're I'm, not yeah, I'm not sure where they're from i thought they were dutch yeah, but, but i'm not sure but i mean for this like who could go wrong for that just a little light like that yeah. Even in Australian dollars, forty-eight dollars. Okay. Uh, it came with that little light, and and it said clearly on Amazon no batteries. But when oh. I got it, it had a case. It had two Sony batteries, the battery charger as well. Oh really? And I thought, That's nice. And with another <clears throat> filter on it, with a, a you know, uh, just like the the yellowy filter thing on there. Yep. And I thought you can't go wrong for that for because I just wanted that to stick on the GH5 mm -hmm. for when I do it at night because it was. I had a big spider in the backyard building a big spider web. Hmm. And I tried to get a, a shot of that with holding the torch and I couldn't do it. So I've got this and put it on there and it, it really did the, a great job. And plus it's adjustable at the back. So if you have it on, have the, the light on, it has the, you know, the, oh, it's messing up the green screen there. That's but funny. It it's, it's got a green display there. So it's <laughs> showing through. Yeah, you can see it. And that's got the, the intensity of it. So you can, uh, yep. you know, turn it down and do that so you yeah, can nice. have the lower light. But I mean, for... Uh, hey, Jeff, uh, like, which specific one was that? I didn't quite catch it when you showed the box. It was the... It says... What is it? It says the newer... It says the 176-216. Very memorable <laughs> number. Well, that's what... I, I remember the 175, you know, quite fondly in that, so... <laughs> that was, and then it's... Uh, but I mean, even now I've got this on a on a, a monopod, and when I'm you know wanting to do something at night in the backyard, you know, doing I've got that and use that as a torch because it, it's something with the rechargeable <laughs> yeah. battery on it, and I can hold it up high. And I thought for for that amount of money, and I thought every you can you, and just being able to stick that in because sometimes you you got natural light works really good. But you just want a little light that just gets rid of a shadow in a horrible place or just brightens up just that little area, just that little bit where you don't uh, want a lot of lighting. How long does that one last with that L-type battery like what you've got on there? Well, it's funny for that. I, I tried it out when I first got it because it's got the little, little battery. I'll put a bigger one on because I had... The only one of the reasons I got it for, because I got two of those batteries that I wasn't using anything for, so I thought I'll get a light that it fits them on to use them. But the little battery it came with, I thought, oh, these won't last too long. I was still got an hour and a half, and it still hadn't gone out. Hmm. So I, I left it on full pelt while you know while I was watching Netflix and left it on for an hour and a half, and it was still going strong. So that's pretty good. So figure of probably about two hours you would get on that. So now, does that light give you daylight? and tungsten or is it strictly daylight it's only daylight and it's just yeah. got a you know sort of that like the the yellowy gel type okay. thing yeah the, fi the filter the diffuser there was another one that had the similar sort of thing that you could get that had the color change okay but that was probably about a hundred dollars but right. even that probably wasn't too bad but i just wanted just that something little that you, that you can do and i even tried it this morning doing it replacing my light here and it would have done a great job the only thing it just wasn't powerful enough to it, it was doing this green screen wasn't lighting the green screen very well so i went back to the other one because i was going to use that one this morning but great little job for just such a small light and i'm really impressed these days that and the we went for when we started off both you and i we've got all these big damn lights mm -hmm. and like now you said you've got that little one on the top of that c200 yeah. and they've got other ones and they can do such a great <laughs> light that 120 the one that you've got there and the, and the 120 is only so about this small. long this big yeah. and, and, and yet, with the diffuser, you know, the diffuser is this big <laughs> but that's the thing is you can but then you can have it like a spotlight as well yes. you can sort of yeah. narrow it down so if you just on your own i'm just going to focus in on rick and everything else is going to be dark so you can hide yeah. a lot of things with that so mm -hmm. but i mean that one small light that just come such a long way in I think such a short time. I know. Really. You know, and actually, well, if you that. look at this Aperture's 120D, the actual mm. light is about that big. It's about a square mm. inch. They're it's called chips on board, COB. Chips on board. It is as bright 
as have you ever been in front of a train like at a track and you're seeing those diesel locomotives come in mm. they're really bright that's this it could be it has mm. the brightness of a diesel locomotive and that's that can blind people when they're looking at it like ooh, that's strong it's amazing with just that little bit of with an of like about a square inch it's it's amazing yeah we we'll go quiet. Oh. <laughs> I thought we it's lost just you. Every, we just all went a bit quiet there. Everybody else, uh, everybody else uh, to talk. So we Harold, you were by the light. We're just talking about lighting in the green screen, and then mm -hmm. with just saying pre-show, you was talking about something that you was experimenting with with software and green screen. Oh yeah. Well, we when we were doing this setup with with Rick, like the one that you see him in here, we uh, were trying some experiments to see. Um, because Rick and I were talking uh, last week or a week before about different uh, different uh, chroma key uh, tools, mm -hmm. and we were talking about um, Rick was talking about how you know ultra key used to be a really big one before, and he was saying, well, you know, it's still around now, and we looked into it, and I, I hadn't really used it much before. Um, I you know. When I had to do green screening, I would usually use uh, key light or just resolve chroma key tools. But yeah, it's in it's in Premiere Pro. It's called Ultra Key, and it's we f I found it to be really f fast, really easy to use. So we we took a footage of Rick, and uh, I keyed it out using both key light and Ultra Key, and I think they look pretty good. You know, I'm going to show the key light one first since I think more more people are going to be um, familiar oh, with premium. key light. Yeah. Yep. So. So key light now is on After Effects. Hi everyone, we are doing a quick test right now of our Canon C200. It's a cinema camera that we. So got is that one you've been using After Effects? Is it? Right that one? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Studio yeah. camera right over there. And that's really Looking good though, isn't it? Because it, 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 for no odd reason other than yeah, it comes out really clean. I do but looking here if I pause this one and we go over to the Ultra Key one. Hi everyone, we are doing a quick test right now Looks of our almost Canon identical, C200. I would say. It's a cinema camera that we got last yeah. December and we have okay. it right now set up as a studio Go camera back to the other one as well, for, so I'm can you see that, that one? On yeah, so uh, actually, this is that uh, the color one, color one before just looked quite slightly better, but you, it's hard to tell though, isn't it? So. <laughs> yeah, I would say so normally just, key light would be better, but yeah. it's also a lot more complex. There's a lot yeah. more parameters yeah. that you can change. It gives um, you just that little bit more freedom that I think lets you make it look, you know, just a little better. But I think Ultra Key got a good. Uh, now, if you think about it, though, if you put me on my single shot, just so yeah. you see, this is just keyed with vMix, the vMix software, mm. and it does a pretty good job just by itself. Yeah. Nothing else. I yeah. got the green screen behind me. Uh, the lighting is only that one light and it does a pretty clean job if you look you don't you might see a little bit of spill but not much not much yeah. on, on the it's back. pretty the good about the spill and uh vmix actually it, it does a really good job of desaturating green spill uh yeah. the only thing where i would say it's, it has a bit of a shortcoming is that it doesn't soften stuff very well right so you tend to get kind of jaggy edges especially like if you like if Rick, if you hold your hand kind of out in front of you and towards the camera, then as you can see, like the edges of it are getting kind of jaggy and that that tends to happen. But I mean, you know, things that are out of focus <laughs> don't tend to get green screen that well. I'm just saying because if you go fast, the green screen's got to keep up with it, especially if I'm here where there's nothing. Let's see. Yeah, right you can see it. as soon as you wait to pick quickly, you can see a bit of green between your fingers. Yeah. See right there. <clears throat> But that's that's the thing is the green screen on these things like the you know the uh, the wire cast and the V mix do a damn good job because they're on the fly. But things yeah. like Premiere Pro and even Final Cut and all those ones, the tools they've got these days when you do it on a proper uh, you know, uh, editor, it does such a fantastic job. We tend to yeah. think of like these sometimes they're a bit harder to do because you get your lighting slightly wrong, you get a mm -hmm. bit of bleed, but it's not that important for what we're doing here. But when you're doing a, a shoot and you put it into there, it's nearly, and it's so easy these days, you just say, put it on, and generally the, what the system does default, it works, unless you've got some really outrageous shadow doing something <laughs> right. uh, horrible. But uh, most of the ones, you just 
plonk it on and it just such a fantastic job i remember trying them years ago you put the kit do that and it was so much you'd spend an hour trying to figure out how yeah. to get the right and i'm like oh it's still not oh no that's right but now you just say apply it and oh that's okay and if you start adjusting it that's usually when you mess it up it's when you think you when you think you can do better yeah so was yeah. that that was uh, so that was in is that just after effects or because that in the normal premiere both. Pro one or? of them was in after effects and yeah. the other one was using premieres ultra now ultra key was actually acquired by adobe through a different product they bought serious magic this is mm -hmm. uh 17 years ago maybe 2000 i'd say this is about 2000 probably four or five mm -hmm. so the serious magic was a great pro no actually maybe only 2003 uh two or three so it's been quite a while now and serious magic disappeared unfortunately but they did keep ultra key as part of premiere so it became the keying software for premiere still works pretty well and key light is the actual keying software for uh, after effects which again was like the industry standard for a while they do a very good job and i think they still do but again, After Effects is going to be a little more complex and difficult to use and how you set it up versus mm. Premiere, which is a lot simpler. But I suppose it's the 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 people who would use the After Effects and that complicated ones are the the, the you know the the proper movie things where you're doing a whole uh, where you supposed to be in a different city or you've got a city backdrop or a country mm -hmm. backdrop that you, you can't afford to have a single bleed on it. And like they're doing so well these days like most even 10, 15 years ago, I remember there was a, a show called Monk. I don't know yes. if you saw that. Yep. The detective yeah, show. that was a good show. I liked that one. I really loved it, but it was an older show. But the, the, when I saw <clears> many years later, I said, well, did you ever realize that we were never in San Francisco? He said, when he's walking across, he yeah. said, that's a studio. That was the first that time they sort of used it. And he said, that was the best effect. Nobody realized we weren't in San Francisco. No, that's so funny. Well, you know, I used to have the Canon XL2, which was a camcorder back when, and mm -hmm. I sold it back to um, a guy who was the uh, one of the guys doing all the B-roll for NCIS, the, the mm -hmm. very popular show on TV. And he shot most of the beach scenes and everything else in L.A., but everybody thought it was in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, well, Virginia. Got... I think they thought it was in Virginia, and you just go, that's funny. Uh, but even then... Uh... When you know when you know california went like even in monk and it's supposed to be in in san francisco you know when the, it's the hollywood hills and you know it's when it's the uh, universal lot you can see and you like mash you, yeah but whenever those helicopters fly over korea you mm -hmm. know it's just over the hollywood hills. Well, you know what that was that was griffith park and that's yeah. where yeah, the sign was <laughs> yeah yeah because because if as long as you don't get that sign in it and cause <laughs> just a few feet yeah. pointing to the other side of griffith park <laughs> You think you're in the middle of nowhere, don't you? It's that nothing. Funny. It's, well, you know, it's another, here, here's a bit of trivia. Do you remember what show Monk came from? The actor. Uh, well, I know he was in um, in the film uh, Galaxy Quest. No, no, yeah, he was, he was, yeah, he wasn't there, but no, he was in a show, a TV show no, for a long that? time. It was really funny. Oh, I can't remember what show was. This that? is my trivia quiz. Wings. Oh, was he? I was oh, never a fan of Wings. wings huh? Oh, actually, was yeah. he? Yeah. And he I was, was never the, a I fan of that. He was in Wings, but he was always funny. He was like, "Oh, things well, don't work." Well, that, uh, that, that, that makes that makes sense. I've been watching the show again. In one of the episodes, they have one of the stars of Wings in there, and so that's why they, they, they probably was, all know uh, each other. Yep. Yeah, uh, but that's what that. But and, he was and on there for was, years. Wings ran for a very long time. I, I love that show. It was funny, um, and the, but he was one of the guys on Wings. Yeah, well, that's probably why, because I didn't realize that's why they had them in in there. But uh, I never used to watch that show. But it's amazing when you haven't seen somebody before, then you notice them. And then you really go back and say, no, they were around. It's just they never had huge parts, and you didn't really notice who they were. My favorite role of his was in Galaxy Quest. He did such a yeah, good like job in Galaxy Quest. Yeah. yeah, that was a good movie. <laughs> the whole world's breaking up. They're all going to die. And he says, I think we need to go a little faster. <laughs> or else we're all going to die okay over, over. <laughs> well, and, and there's the part where uh, 
they all get transported onto the, the ship and then uh he he's like a couple minutes late or something you know all the other people get really freaked out and he he just comes in and he's just like well that was a hell of a thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally different to the monk, but it would be so calm, calm and calm. I just thought some of some of the films that they've done over the years have been so underappreciated, and I think that's one. I, I watch it every now and then. It's just so funny that, that one. I just love the aliens away the where they all are. <laughs> oh, yeah, one of the, the Ferengi. Un- yeah, <clears throat> it was a good movie, and I, I like the fact they all get beamed up and go, "Where are we? We're here, the crew." Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm an actor. <laughs> I'm still yeah. waiting. I'm been watching the, the new, on Netflix uh, or no on Amazon Prime the new Star Trek Picard. Mm. I'm just still waiting for William Shatner to make an appearance. He seems oh to want God. to get in. He must be a, a ninety odd now, but I mean, he's, uh, I he think he's eighty nine right now. Yeah, but I haven't seen him in. But usually, if they can get him in there somewhere, they will do. <laughs> yeah, because Nimoy's gone. Actually, they're almost all dead. Yeah, um, that's right. Zulu's around, but he's 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 mentally gone off the edge. Um, Chekhov <laughs> disappeared. I think they probably took him back to Russia and killed him. Uh, what else? Um, hmm. Uhura, Is Scotty still around? I, I think Uhura passed away. I I'm think not she sure. Did I thought I'm she did. Sure. Uh, God, a lot of them are just gone from from those days. Uh, Doohan is gone. Uh, James Doohan. Uh, the doctor, DeForest, yeah. uh, DeForest Kelly, Kelly died. Yeah, so at eighty nine, Kirk's one of the last ones left. Hmm. But even then, when you think about it, it's heyday. And how old were they when it started? They, they were, were probably in the thirties. But there was well, that, probably that movie th- came out in nineteen sixty. Uh, not the movie, the show sixty four and sixty five. It was yeah, only on for two seasons. But as I said, but they they were in the probably twenty five thirty then. So you can see it's quite a long time ago. But we yeah. tend to think with a lot of shows you're like, oh yeah. But hey, that that's so many. Like you just see some other films, like even that Galaxy Quest. I think that's about twenty years old now, and that's getting on, yeah. isn't it? So yeah, it's and, been a uh, long time. Is it that old think, already? Oh, that, wow. I think it is. I'm sure it would be about twenty years old. But and Tim Allen just, hasn't been on much TV. Really. I don't know what he's on anymore. I was just thinking this morning of uh, how much I've wasted something was back in thinking when you had a camera in 84 filming with my video camera. I thought back then, everybody loved you to film things. And I thought, I missed out. I could have been filming everything. You know, like now. <laughs> yeah. wanted to go. Nobody loved it. So, oh, yes, film me doing this. But because you, nobody saw it on the, cause you, nobody, you wouldn't see it all over the internet. But I mean, now you can't do anything. But I thought back then, like I took mine on a plane. You took it out of the plane. You took it out of the airport. You took it out on the balcony so you could see the planes. Filmed around the airport, yeah. take it out, walking into Disneyland, filming in the thing. I took it on a roller coaster, hmm. doing all that, and you can't do anything like that. And nobody how, cared on the roads and that. It just nobody how heavy cared. Was that beta cam that you were carrying around? It, 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 I'll tell you this, after doing a few holidays of that, I didn't film for another six years after that because wow. I said I did all these holidays and all I did was lug that damn thing around <laughs> yeah. and, film it. and I got messed up. I thought I didn't enjoy it. I, I filmed everything, but I was looking through and they had black and white viewfinders there. So all of America to me was black and white because I <laughs> looked right, through right. that. Yeah. And I, I, but I thought it was well worth doing, but I wish he had the freedom to film like you did back then because people yeah. just oh it's a video camera they were so excited for if you, the, you got caught on video camera but uh but now you think of it that. with your phone you've got the ability to film anything mm, that's right and and that's the thing is you can get away with that with your phone yeah but you bring out a camera somebody will slap you down i know <laughs> i know what are you filming uh, I, mm. I was filming that person behind you no you weren't you were filming me yeah, no, I well, there, there's the like the j- incident Jeff had about the guy that said, "Oh, the must, the weightlifter yeah. guy." Yeah, to so take a picture of me, and well, I don't want it to. I thought, better take a picture of me, or else he might hit me. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll take. Everybody, get the other way around the Instagrammers yeah. that want to be noticed and all that. So anyway. yeah, oh, that's funny. Well, anyway, we are just about out of time. Yes, we've gone over again. We've so. gone over, but that's okay. <laughs> Uh, that was fun. Well, Jeff, we will see you next week on the next 
TDO. And, yeah. and if I win the lottery, to today? I think that was I was going to say, and, if, uh, I win, if, I, if I win the lottery tonight, I'll be back next week with my C200. But so I probably won't. I think you would That's love the C200. Problem. I mean, I, I haven't gotten that much into it. We're, we're just now starting to use it. Harold's been playing with it a lot. It's a nice camera. And and the fact that the interchangeable lenses are there, it, it you can get the looks you want, which is nice. Mm. Yeah, I think it's really nice. And by the looks of it, it looks like it'd be very, it's got plenty of buttons, but easy to use. Yeah, and it's but, not you, that big. Yeah, the body honestly, itself is pretty small. It's not small. that big. Yeah, no, it doesn't look that big, but it's big enough that it's not too uh, too light to hold. Well, let me so give I you an idea. While he has that shot on, I'm going to stand up. And I'm going to mm. lean, and you can see my hand on it. Yeah. You see right. my hand? Yep. It's not, yep. This right. is yep. the camera right here. I'm touching mm. the lens. It's not yep. that big. So the actual no, body it's itself is not that much bigger than like a DSLR or something. No. Or, you know, it's different shaped. It's it's a little different shape. It's more squared, right? Yeah, with it's a, like with a big top, if you will, because it goes up and you could put, you know, the monitors up. It kind of goes into different you know, positions and yeah. everything. It's got the handle. It's pretty ergonomic. And it, uh, most parts of it, you know, the monitor, the handle, they're actually, uh, you have to put them on there. It doesn't come with them on. Right. No, yeah, but, but that makes it more flexible. So now, we got the got kit. The, so with the kit, well, you get the monitor and you get the, I think, uh, there was one other thing. Is it the handle? No. Yeah, I mean, it, it might it, be the it handle. Came with the handle, So yeah. with, the, with the kit, you get a little bit more, but this we bought it i think it would cost 6500 when we got it that was the new price it went down a thousand dollars the month before so mm -hmm. yeah, we saved quite a bit because it was and and remember i think the original the c200 was something like thirteen thousand. it was an outrage because i mean it's that's like that was the price of the c100 or something wasn't it back then well yeah because the c100 when right. we got it was about six thousand yeah, I think now I you can get it for I'm... under. Th I think it's under three. Mm. But but the thing is, it's like when we do. Yeah, oh, I can get it so cheap now. They say, yeah, but why would I want that? I want the C two hundred. Yeah. Because you 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 change with that. You say, oh, you love that, even though it's still great the C one hundred. But you said no. But now for the same money, it's the C one hundred. I can get the two hundred. Yeah. What and image are we in here? Are we doing the four K or the ten eighty? Um, on your shot, you mean? Yeah. Uh, we're doing 4K, but you so know it's, it's going taking, out at 1080. Yeah, it's going out at 1080. So we're doing a 10 a 4K capture, but the mm. HDMI, or actually the SDI out, is going out as 1080. 30, oh, actually, 30 frames a we second. we are passing 1080 because it's over the SDI, and we just yeah. we just have the 1080 on the SDI. Yeah. That's right. So it does a pretty good job if you look at details, like like face details and stuff. It really captures mm. a lot of details. Um, and again, the skin tones are looking okay because of, of the color changes. Out of the box, skin tones don't look too hot. No, well, it's like everything. You've got to do your own things. And the great thing with all those cameras, have got plenty of picture profiles, so you can do all the settings in them. You and don't. Then you don't. Don't they have you any three picture? profiles? No yeah, and this one they don't. This you, is the BT seven oh nine. The stuff a bit more manually. So this is BT seven oh nine, which is like a Rec seven. Is it seven oh nine or seven eight nine? So B, it's BT seven oh nine, which is the same as Rec seven oh nine. But so it's a BT seven oh nine, and it gives you a wide DR ca gamma curve, which is very similar to the wide DR setting on um, the XF seven oh five. And uh, by the way, that's wide DR as in dynamic range. Yeah, wide dynamic range and. They give you that, they give you Canon Log 1, and they give you Canon Log 3. three. Canon Log mm. 3 being a bit bit closer to the Rec. 709 and the Canon Log 1 being very, like, it's a very, um, uh, I'm not sure what, what you call it, but it's, you know, it, it looks very um, low contrast when you mm -hmm. take it because it's intended to be graded. I'm always scared with the with the you know the log files that I've done it that badly that I can't recover it. <laughs> so I'm always too scared. But anyway, yeah. I'll, I'll so really we're do, we're doing the BT seven oh nine because it's the easiest mm. and you don't have to do a lot of grading and you can be up and running right away without yeah. any real post if you do it right. So it works. It's a pretty good uh, profile. Log three. If you have a lot of time and want to do a lot of LUTs afterwards and lookup tables, okay, but that takes more time. Mm. 
yeah it's all always that if you take a little bit more time it turns out better but you the thing is like it's always you've just got to learn your camera mm -hmm. they the do a great job but the thing is if you'd learn it but if you don't use it for three months you forget it right and then you do the wrong thing and then you get a few horrible shoots and you give up <laughs> you say oh no that's horrible <laughs> i'll get a better camera so well no it's not the camera it's me <laughs> you, you've yep. got to improve yourself so that's true well, anyway well good seeing you again uh, thanks for watching the show everybody out there and we will see you next week on tech down over have and a good keep one, an everyone. eye out thanks. for our lighting special yeah we're gonna yes. we're gonna be doing a couple of shows on lighting and uh green screening pretty soon have a good one everyone bye bye, bye everyone bye And it's a